Thanks, guys. I'm joined by Forgiven here after that, that dominating win. And first off, was that your game plan from the start? Because it was a very low kill game, but then it was all about the tower pushing, and then the game just kind of ended. Well, we are a tactical team. We don't play solo queue. So when you, when you see HTK playing, you should always think that we have five brains and we try to play the game the most optimal way. And we have a brilliant personality and the goats that helps us. And in general, all of our team is on the same page. And I think this will further develop as the season progresses. Mm, talking about progression, um, this team versus some of the previous teams you've been on, how has it been like, one, integrating into this team, and two, the potential that you think this team has? What do you think about that? Well, even before me and the other players, like Jango said, Van der Watt, we joined HK, H2K. The past seasons were went to Worlds. We were kind of what SK were in 2014. So we kind of want to replicate the success, but without pressure. We are a new team, like we barely played together for like one and a half week. So you already understand that where team that develops. Like, if I predict the future, I wouldn't be joining four teams in a row. So um, I think it would be good. But right now, the only thing we can do is just we play game per game, and we try to develop as players. Mm, well, it started off very well, as we just saw in that last game. And finally, I do want to get your opinion just on the AD carry meta in general, how you think the AD carries have fared in the off season, and also with Corky as well, and how you think Corky stacks up in the current uh, tier list. Well, I, like for example, I see Reddit every, every week, and like, I see some threads that they complain about how AD carry is. The truth is that it has been worse, but it has been better. And AD carry will not be as season two, where you get free items that you one shot, one of the five, everyone. I wish it was like that, but <laughs> unlucky. So I think with how the game it is right now, the role is pretty decent. That's all. Pretty decent. Well, looks very decent on stage. Thank you very much for giving, and congratulations once again on the win. We're going to shoot it over to the analyst desk to break down that game. Well, Forgiven, spit in the fire. I always love listening to him. Um, so a cute team. No, we play tactical out with the old, in with the new, and that goes also for the one-liner by far. Now it is we are a tactical team. We don't play solo queue, and that is how we can summarize this early game from yeah. H2K. I mean, he's 100% right, because H2K is what I am Cologne when they played. It was full focus on towers, objectives, not kills. Same deal here. I think we had to wait 18, 19 minutes before we had a first spot. We did, but you look at the team setups in general from the champion select, and it was so obvious of what they wanted to do. Uh, I mean, to, someone could even someone have, predicted could have predicted, it. predicted some of these picks. Maybe so. You I don't know said they will run with Aura Control Mage or Ari or LeBlanc. No, Le Show. You're covering the all bases. I said never mind Control Mage. <laughs> I expect Ari or LeBlanc with the Graves Jungle. Okay. It was very smart into the rise, full control of the lane. Shen as well. Would maybe struggle a little bit against yeah. Kennen, but then where's the lane swap? Oh, wait, why is there a lane swap? So that's what I was wanting to get to is they get the flash from Forgiven. Crepo talked about it. They could have just taken the 2v2. Giants take the slightly conservative play, preempt the swap perhaps out of, uh, out of H2K. I think they tried to guess, yes. I, I think so too, but nevertheless, they ended up in a, in a situation where it was two versus one against a team that has Shen with the teleport, has an Ari that can roam, more global presence. I mean, uh, X Pepe was not running teleport on his rise. He was running Ghost, which does affect that we saw teleport rise in the earlier games. So you try and then play a macro game against a team that have more global pressure and more options, and then you end up bungling it. I mean, we're about to, to look at one of these situations where just Audrey with wrong place, wrong time. I think, yeah, exactly what happened at the mid tower was really the opening for H2K where they take down the T1 mid because the setup here, it's very important to understand when there's a lane swap, the guy receiving the wave towards his tower needs to be the guy with a global and often also the weaker guys. And this can't just bend the top lanes because obviously they've been denied. So bottom lane, Shen is there with TP getting the wave. Top lane, Adri is getting, that is wrong. There should have been Adam on this cannon. He had a few seconds left on teleport, but by now he would have it ready. He would get this wave and he could now be a threat. But because he's sitting mid and it's out with top lane, getting all this farm, there's no global pressure. So H2K, no. Okay, we are we have five members because yeah. we have a Shen. We can just keep pushing to get a free mid tower. And again, there's something we highlighted earlier in the day. Towers are worth so much gold. So once you start falling behind in towers, that goalie just keeps snowballing, 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 and you fall behind in items. 
Yeah, you do. And I, I just look at that situation. H2K weren't pushed into making any tough decisions. At no point did H2K look under pressure to, oh, we have to you know, account for somebody being out of position here. It was just very simple, very quick movements to the tower, push mid. Audrey's still top. He's still top. Oh, now he's coming down. We've got the tower anyway. And, and they just did that time and time again. Yeah. They got a couple of kills to open the game up. But honestly, by that point, H2K had had such a lead because Giants just allowed H2K to just play the lane swap out exactly in a standard way, nothing overly special about it. Yeah, that's very interesting to see because last season around at the beginning when H2K racked up a lot of wins, we, saw, we said at the end of the split, hmm, Maybe they aren't renewing anymore because they aren't dominating the competition as much as they did really much in the beginning through their tactical play. So it will be very interesting to see for me how Prali will adapt this time around with these new players that might have a higher ceiling. Hey, for sure, because again, if you have their mechanics, the individual talent of some of these members, we always of, often talk about Yankos being a big upgrade, obviously, in the jungle. Add in then that macro play, which makes H2K consistent. And I think in... The LCS, both NA and EU LCS, the most important thing is just having a good macro strategy because that gives you consistency and that will beat out a lot of the teams who might have better individual players, obviously not the case for H2K, but some other middle of the table teams. But because you have better shot calling and better communication, you take basically all the objectives yeah. away from them and they don't do anything. Yeah, you do. And it just I think that's such a, an important point. But to kind of half answer a question we asked earlier about who would be talking during the game, I did take a couple of minutes uh, here in the studio. You do have the luxury of kind of almost being able to, to hear the players as they're playing. Uh, Ryu's talking a lot. Oduamne is talking a lot. Generally, all of the players are contributing, but those two seem to be the louder voices. Yeah, very strong start for H2K and back to the drawing board for Giants. Now up next, it is the LCS rookies of Splice versus the Unicorns of Love. And as we go, we'll hear from Hillesang on Steelback's homecoming to the European LCS. Steelback has improved a lot. The last year when I played against him, I wasn't afraid. I didn't respect him that much. With the time he was playing in NA, he was performing good. And now that I play with him, I can see that he's really, really good.